Hey YouTube, Vermont Prepper. What you see here is a four row aluminum radiator that we're gonna change out in my military truck right there for the two row that I have, or three row. Uh, it's hard to say what it is, but it's smaller, uh, holds less. And as you know, if you follow the channel, you know that uh, the truck is turboed and that it runs hot. So it's gonna be one of two things that I do. Uh, the second being a uh, change out of my water pump for a uh, high flow uh, water pump uh, especially during idle because that's when it gets really hot so stay tuned don't touch that channel and enjoy welcome to my world we're going to talk mainly about military vehicles solar power and self-sufficiency but i also like to live life to its fullest potential i do this through music specifically i'm a drummer Music runs through my veins, and I'm also going to discuss the various equipment I use and throw in a few covers. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the channel. All right, here's what we have. And it's hard to say how many rows that radiator is. Maybe somebody who knows more about these things than I do know. It's a stock radiator, and it's uh, steel. So it's quite a bit heavier, but at the same time, it also cools down a lot slower than aluminum. So that's one reason for getting an aluminum radiator. And secondly, the aluminum radiator that I did get is a uh, four row, like I was mentioning before, and that holds more uh, coolant. I'm actually pretty interested to see how that alone helps with, if at all, helps with the uh, cooling of the turbo here because it gets quite hot and it's relatively quick that it does that. Uh, I could be just going around town and then once it's stopped in idle for more than like a minute or two uh, that that temperature really creeps up. So and then you start seeing the backwash uh, of the of the coolant into the reservoir and it just it's just a whole mess so I had to and, and you lose some in the process here uh, when when that happens. So you have to keep on filling the uh, radiator uh, reservoir here, and uh, it's just all around messy. And, and then you tack on winter on top of that; it makes it even worse, right? If if you have a, like a two foot snow, you can't even really get this out to do anything with it. Uh, today happens to be one of the warmest days we've had this year. It's about 60. You can see there's still a little bit of snow. It's not a ton, but there's still snow out here, but it's it's uh, pretty warm, so I'm taking advantage of it. So it's not going to be a step-by-step -step, uh, video uh, because I'm only one person here filming, but I will tell you what I'm going to do, uh, and then we'll go step-by-step step, maybe like that instead of sh me sh you know showing myself actually doing it it's a matter of just uh, removing you know some of the bolts you know the mounting bracket etc so it's not something that uh, is really intricate that you wouldn't be able to figure out I'll explain it and uh, we'll see what happens with this with this radiator uh, I'm hoping that it, it it helps by itself without the water pump but we'll see all right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, the top hose and these uh, these uh, mounting bracket bolts and you know, some of the bolts here to get kind of this uh, uh, cover and shroud off and uh, start taking it apart. All right, there's the top of the exposed radiator. And I'm not sure yet. I might not need to take this shroud all the way off and get under the truck in this really wet weather right here. We'll see. Uh, next thing is to take the uh, oil cooler hoses off. And that's the metal ones. And those are always a job. So now we're at the hard part. I'll probably do the uh, the heater ones first. They're the rubber hoses over here. Right there. 
So I'll do that and then uh, the hoses. There's one right here. And one a little bit further down. All right, let's get a status. So right where my screwdriver is tapping, that's the heater hose. Right here is a sensor. And we got the lower hose off. If you can see all the way down at the bottom there. Uh, it might be hard to see, but take my word for it, it's off. Now we have to get these pipes off right here, top and bottom here, and then similar on the other side. Uh, has to do with the uh, transmission cooling system, the oil cooling system. So uh, it's going to be a little bit slow from here. But once I get those off on each side, there's two on each side, I could just lift out the radiator without taking the shroud off, which is which is really good because I remember putting that shroud in. Uh, it was a while ago, so I had to kind of jog my memory. And those bottom bolts on a shroud were a little hard to get to, so I'm quite pleased I don't need to do that. But this is actually a hard part here. All right, that's what we're doing next. All right, I think I exaggerated about how tough it was gonna be because it was really easy to get these uh, bolts off right here. If you can you could see where my index finger is, right there. And then down toward the bottom, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's a similar one down toward the bottom there. It's a transmission coolant or oil. So now, theoretically, I could just lift this radiator out. I'm gonna give that a whirl. All right, there you have it. Radiator out. Uh, just gotta get this mounting bracket. It's actually a, a shock absorber for the bottom and theoretically you're supposed to bolt those in. You see the, the little holes right here but I just had it laying underneath the, the radiator and it was just fine. I don't know I may get new ones. Who knows? Maybe not because I want to get this thing in. Shouldn't affect it very much. Uh, so now it's the process of uh, matching up the right holds and I think I'm gonna have to do something for that sensor because I noticed and I'll check it out that over here this sensor you see how it's orientated right here here's your heater and there's your, uh, your top oil coolant oil uh, inlet there or outlet one or the other I forget but this is a sensor right here and if you notice on the the other one you don't have that so you know, we'll get the light out of the way but you don't have that little protrusion there that the other one has so that you could just screw that sensor in there so probably gonna have to use one of these holes and get some kind of an adapter of some sort I don't know I gotta figure it out but it is what it is I wanna go over a couple things here you can notice the uh, width of the radiators you see this one is about two and an eighth this one is two and I'd say five eighths. So you got quite a bit more volume when you take into account the length and width there. Uh, so it should theoretically work better 
will it be enough? Uh, maybe driving by itself, I'm going to guess. I don't know. Maybe not. But I think that combined with uh, changing the water pump will help, especially when I'm towing something. So there's no way I could tow anything right now. Uh, it's, just, it's just running way too hot just driving alone. So I'm hoping that works out. The second thing I want to go over is what I was talking about with the sensor here. So this sensor screws in right here. You see how it protrudes there. You don't have that on this radiator. Well, you have, you do have a hole here, so maybe I could adapt something. Maybe there's some kind of an adapter. I doubt it. Uh, in any event, I'm probably going to have to figure out a way to do, uh, to mount this somewhere. I'm not really sure, or maybe not, and just do a whole different sensor system and see what happens. But in any event, that's not a huge deal. The huge deal is cooling the engine. So uh, if that works, I'm in good shape. All right, so the next thing would be, uh, I'm gonna try and find a sensor that will work. And if not, I'm just gonna put it back together and start her up. All right, so I figured while I'm doing the uh, coolant, system here I change out the uh, thermostat and I got a 195 for it because I run it in the winter and that'll give me some better heat actually it's the same same thing so I didn't want to run a 180 even though that would help with the cooling of the engine uh, you need heat here in the winter so cleaned off the uh, thermostat housing there and on the actual uh, engine there so all I have to do is button it up now I put some grease on the threads of the the bolts because they were kind of rusted a little bit so I wire brushed them down and we'll uh, put it back on there now all right so there we have it nothing too uh, earth shattering there no matter of unbolting it uh, had to, like I said, wire brush uh, the old gasket off because it was really kind of welded on there from the heat, I guess. And uh, made it nice and shiny and uh, so that the good one will have uh, contact, you know, positive contact so that there's no leaks. So we'll see when we turn it on. The next thing will be uh, putting the radiator back in. I'm just waiting for some... Uh, rubber bushings. I decided to change the uh, bushings out. I'll show you. I mean, if I had to, I could use these over. They're not too bad, but I figure while I'm doing it, it's a heavier duty uh, radiator as well. So these these bottom ones are kind of ratty. You know, they're kind of falling apart. They probably could be reused, but not optimum. So. I get them in tomorrow, so I'll do it really quick. One other thing I wanted to mention before I put this back in is, uh, remember I was talking about that sensor. I wrongly uh, assumed that it was a, a coolant temperature sensor, but what it turns out to be is a radiator uh, coolant level sensor, so I don't really need that. I know when the radiator's uh, low and when it's hot, so it really... Uh, I really don't need it, so all I have to do is just I just tighten these back up. Don't need to uh, find any kind of uh, adapter or anything. So that was a bit of uh, good news there. So it makes it easier to put it back in without having to search all around town and the internet for different adapters. All right, so we have the radiator installed, and I'll show you some of the issues I had with it. The first one being this inlet right here. My other heater has a, uh, a regular protrusion an inlet that sticks out. It's a pipe that sticks out for the uh, radiator hose. This radiator hose right here is supposed to go in right there. Obviously that's not going to work so what do I have to do? I had to go to Napa 
and get a uh, adapter with a reducer to make it fit and I'll put some uh, pipe dope on there and screw it right in hopefully it'll be it'll be good and uh, I won't have to worry about it uh, in any event the other issue I had were these particular uh, oil cooler inlets right there they were extremely hard to get in because I don't know the way the radiators lined up and the bottom one I don't know if you can see the bottom one at all I have a light shined on it but they're the same thing the bottom one the uh, actual pipe stuck out too much and would not allow me to uh, screw in the bottom one at all there was there was just no room so I had to take a grinder and grind down the end and I didn't have to do very much but I did and uh, it's it's aluminum so it's pretty easy to do but it was after you know about 25 minutes of uh, screwing around with it thinking I didn't have it aligned and finally realized that uh, I uh, couldn't I didn't have any room so those are the main issues and we'll see if uh, this works I'll fill it with water first just so I don't waste any antifreeze in case there's any leaks. Okay, if you look at my temperature gauge, it's sitting between uh, 160 and 180. And uh, I'm gonna let it idle because I took it for a drive and uh, I made sure there was no leaks, there's no leaks. I had to fix a small leak on a transmission cooler side there and that was just a matter of uh, putting some Teflon tape around the uh, fitting and screwing it back in so that was not a problem uh, my adapter works well I'll show you And uh, it seems, it seems to be fine now, like it hasn't, I haven't gotten a, a temperature light yet. Um, I'm not sure if it's because I changed the thermostat or because I added the radiator or whether it's a combination of both. But for right now, it's working. Uh, I do have the high flow water cooler on its way so I'm going to go ahead and continue and do that because I feel that uh, towing this trailer here with stuff in it would probably do a lot to uh, heat up the engine there so I'm going to I'm going to continue with that that'll be a project that I'll see what's involved I may do it I may not do it uh, in some ways it's it looks like a big job in some ways it doesn't so I'll have to really assess that when it comes in and when it gets a little bit warmer out uh, we're about to have a major snowstorm here this weekend so it's just in time so the thing that I have left to do with this radiator is just uh, button it up put the top brackets on and uh, the uh, top cover that's it all right, everybody, I appreciate you watching, and uh, as always, keep prepping. It's crazy out there.